Hi guys, in today's video, we'll be working with some cubes. Like a lot of cubes. Let's make pixel art. I originally had this idea back in 2019 when the B mod first came out for Minecraft. So this idea is old and been done a million times before, and I've even tried it myself, but I couldn't finish it because I ran out of blocks, but this time I've come prepared. Now I've got double the blocks and a loose plan. The B is approximately seven by nine. So first I'll start by stacking the cubes. This by far was the most time consuming part. Once I've got them all glued together, I'm gonna take a rubber band and wrap it around the whole thing to keep it in place. I need seven rows of seven and nine rows of nine, I think. One thing that really bothered me about these blocks last time is that they weren't even, like at all. And I tried really hard to make them even. I sanded them down. I chose the ones that were most even and it still didn't look very good. So this time around, I didn't even bother to check. I feel like the only way to get real perfect cubes every time is to maybe have them 3D printed. So I'll settle for wood. Once I had all the rows I needed, it was time to attach them all together. and we're left with something that looks like this. Now we just need four more of these. This craft has more math than I remembered. Okay, here we are. I think these are all the sides I need. Let's just take these rubber bands off and see if they're still stuck together. Okay, look at that. We have some solid pieces here. Now let's see how they all fit together. But wait a minute, remember how I told you I had done this project before? Well, I don't want to waste any cubes, so we're gonna bury this guy alive. Okay, now we can glue all the pieces together. I fiddled around with this for a little bit, trying to get the sizing correct, and eventually settled on this square. It looked kind of weird to me, but I thought the whole game is square, so it must be right. I figured once I was done painting it, it would all come together. So I glued down the sides using tons of glue to make sure it was sturdy. I came back the next day and it was completely stuck. I tried pulling off the paper that was stuck to the bottom, but not much came off. Also, it's still kind of wet. But now it's time for the final piece. When I tell you I struggled, I struggled putting this thing on. Also, way too much glue. I eventually realized that wasn't gonna work and I decided to use some spare cubes I had left over to seal him in one by one. And we're on to the final row, but of course it doesn't fit. After a lot of struggling and a few tools, I finally had my B body and it's surprisingly really heavy. I'm gonna let this guy sit and let's work on the wings. But first, let's not have a repeat of last time. I need to put down a silicone mat so my cubes won't stick to the paper. I spent a while looking for a picture of these wings that showed the entire thing. And I knew that it would be hard, but I didn't know exactly how hard. I didn't specify, but I didn't get very far last time I tried making this bee. I kind of only made the face. So I was not expecting all the trouble. Eventually, I I settled on a shape that I liked and glued them together. And then I let them sit overnight because these are particularly very fragile. Some are only hanging on by the corner. So in the meantime, let's get back to this guy. I'm gonna start by giving him a fresh white coat of paint. Normally I would use gesso, but I've never used gesso and I only see people use gesso. So if you know what gesso is, let me know in the comments. Is it different than white paint? I assume that it's different than white paint. I don't know. But anyways, I covered this whole cube in white paint. That way the actual colors I use won't be completely absorbed by the wood. Oh, and surprise, surprise, background change. Did I choose red because I was in a bad mood because this craft was not working out? 
I don't know, maybe I did. But you know, it's never too late to turn this craft around, so let's get started painting. I feel like these will probably be the crustiest palettes you'll see all day. I'm gonna mix up a brown and a yellow, just getting the base colors down. I wanna start by putting the basic colors down first, that way I can tell his head from his butt. Now I'm gonna paint the entire cube yellow, except for two rows at the bottom. Those are gonna be his booty cheeks. <laughs> reference image from my phone of a picture I found of the bee. There are tons of different variations of this bee. So it looks like his bottom half is two rows of brown, one row of yellow, and then one row of brown, and then another row of yellow. Now that I've got the general shape and color of the body of the bee, it's time to work on the part that I have been dreading this whole time, and that is the face. The face is the only part that I tried last time I attempted to make this. And it was really difficult. I was trying my hardest to make it as accurate as possible with the cubes, making sure they're all the same size and making sure none of them were dented in any weird ways. I sanded them down. It was supposed to be perfect. And somehow it still came out kind of a mess. So I was really nervous when it came to painting this guy's face. And the more I painted, the less enthusiastic I became about this. I could not tell why this looked so weird to me but it did. I was using my references. I just did not understand why they looked so different. But I figured once I got every color down, I'd be able to get a better grasp on his face and where I should place things. But it wasn't until I came back the next morning, that is when I realized I have messed up. Like so bad, like so, so, so bad. I made him too wide. Instead of gluing the rows side by side, I should have glued them on top of one another. So he's two rows too wide. I was gonna start over, but I'm completely out of glue and blocks. So we're gonna make the best of what we have. Yes, he is like very wide. He's, he's still a bee. You can still tell he's a bee, I think. So I'm gonna run with this. I think I can make this work. Okay, it's the next day. I'm back and I'm feeling hopeful. I've got my palette paper and I'm ready to turn things around. I found this picture of a skinned Minecraft bee. I'm gonna use this as a reference. I think it'll be easier to tell which squares or which color with them all laid out like this. I was missing a few colors, so I tried to mix some together. Tried is a pretty loose term. I was trying to get this dark brown, so I just mixed it with dark colors and turns out, that wasn't right, <laughs> but I know I could just look it up and figure it out. I don't know, it's kind of a talent at this point. I'm so horrible at mixing colors, and I think I refuse to get any better. Okay, here he is. Now that I have his basic colors down, I'm gonna spend a few hours touching up the sides and getting a better color. I'm really hoping this will make it look more like the bee from Minecraft. I'm gonna let that dry, and in the meantime, let's paint the wings. These things are covered in so much glue. I ended up just putting an entire layer of glue on top of them to make sure they were sturdy and didn't fall apart. Also, I'm a little bit worried that the wings are gonna be too small for the bee. So I guess we'll just have to see how this goes. In an attempt to make our bee look more bee-like, I made this antenna to go on top of his head. I was just gonna paint the squares that were there, but I thought it might look better if it were more 3D. All right, let's try the wings. I think the wings will work, but I'm really struggling with the placement. If they're too far back, I'm afraid they'll look too small, and if they're too close up, I'm afraid they'll just look weird. So I settled on a place somewhere in the middle, despite them not wanting to stay on. Oh, no. 
So I held them down with tape and my palette paper. After everything was completely dry, I decided to varnish it with a glossy top coat. And this is the final result. Honestly, he doesn't look that bad. I can definitely tell he's the bee from Minecraft. Yes, he's a little bit wide. Okay, he's wide, but I still think he's really cute actually. I really like his wings and I like his antenna. You never seen a bee before? Aren't you afraid? All in all, I do like how he came out, regardless of how wide he was. But really quick while I have you here, I want to show you a few Minecraft characters I made a few years ago. Now, it's been a few years, so some are kind of dirty and broken, but you get the gist. If you want me to do more of these or any other characters, let me know in the comments below because these are really fun to make and I'm determined to make one good Minecraft character. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, here's another one I know you'll enjoy as well. Bye!